Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode. It's day three of albums that are 30 years old in 2023 as we look back on 1993. A pretty cool year for music. Again, not maybe not the most popular stuff, right? Because popular music was, for people who watch this channel, the 90s is looked at as kind of like a dead decade, right? Because a lot of the real popular stuff was veering away from the music we loved in the 70s and the 80s. But it doesn't mean there wasn't really great music being released that kind of fell under the radar. That's what kind of this month is going to all be about, is those maybe albums that didn't get lots of notoriety and some genres that people, the majority of the people weren't really listening to the masses were kind of avoiding there was a lot of really good stuff kind of floating under the surface here you might have some pretty big name bands uh listed here as well during the month but uh for the most part there's going to be a lot of lesser known groups especially lots of metal and lots of prog i think you're going to be hearing about this month so anyway let's dive right into this this is the second studio album from this british band it was released may 24th 1993 recorded at the manor studio in oxfordshire england Produced by David Bianco for Earache Records and also Columbia Records. It is the ethereal mirror from Cathedral. That's right. The great British doom band, Cathedral. This follows their debut album, The Forest of Equilibrium, which is uh, was a you know pretty groundbreaking doom record at the time of its release, but... Uh, Sounds very different from most of the other material in their catalog. Uh, the Forest of Equilibrium has really, really slow, monolithic, heavy, almost funeral doom style songs with you know growling vocals, and it's just very dark and serious. And starting with the Ethereal Mirror, the band decided to ditch the full-on growling vocals, although singer Lee Dorian still had a very gruff nature to his vocal style but the songs are a little bit more upbeat definitely take on a psychedelic edge they these this band would go right into doing uh, what many consider like some of the great stoner rock or stoner metal releases of the 90s I would also include this in there as well it, it's still doom metal don't get me wrong but that whole kind of psych and stoner vibe is already permeating their music on this particular album. It's a great one. I've often cited this as my favorite um, Cathedral album. So we've got, again, Lee Dorian on vocals, Gary Jennings, the great Gary Jennings on guitar. He also plays bass on this album as well. Mark Ramsey Wharton on drums and Adam Lehan on second guitar. Killer stuff on here. Uh, if you like big, crushing, doom-laden riffing, You've come to the right place. Screaming guitar solos. Like I said, occasionally you get uh, these little kind of uh, psychedelic freak out, space rocky type things in some of the songs as well, which kind of adds to the whole flavor of this album. But man, Ride is a terrific song. Midnight Mountain might be my favorite Cathedral song. Absolutely tremendous. Fountain of Innocence, crushing. One of the longer songs on the, there's, there's, uh, you get three songs that exceed seven minutes on this uh, album. Enter the Worms is killer. If you want just pile driving, never stopping riffing, check out Grim Luxuria. Uh, to slow things down a little bit, kind of reminiscent to their material on the first album, you get Jaded Entity, which is terrific. And then, of course, the last track. Uh, and, and all the songs are really good on here. I'm not going to mention every single one of them, but uh, Phantasmagoria, which is nearly nine minutes long. That is just absolutely crushing and terrific. I love this album. I think because, what I really like about this album is I think it, it blends in some of the the real slower and heavier doominess of that first album with kind of everything that was going to come throughout the rest of the decade from this band. So that, that, that mix of kind of like stoner and psychedelia with doom uh, into a to a sound that's slightly more I don't want to say easy listening but I, I find that this album and all the ones that come after to me I reach for more in the cathedral catalog not, not to deny the greatness of the debut album but I find this just much more listenable it's a little little brighter a little more upbeat it certainly is heavy um, but there's just there's a there's a slight accessibility about it that I really, really love. and But it's just it's got all the big, beefy, heavy riffing that I'd want, which I crave from this band and from this style of music. So uh, just killer stuff there. There were the guys in 1993. All right, looking all sorts of young, right? A great album. The Ethereal Mirror. Their second album follows The Forest of Equilibrium, which was released in 1991. To me, like I said, if you're new to the band Cathedral... 
I would have no issues with telling you to start here. Uh, but really, any of the round, all the rounds are really good. So if you, if the Forest of Equilibrium, if you don't really kind of like the growly vocal type of thing, I would maybe hold off on that one. If you, like I said, his vocals are still pretty gruff on here, but it's not full on death metal growl by any means. And he would kind of go on and soften this style of singing a little bit. Oh, he still has a very recognizable, unique style of singing. Uh, but on later albums as the decade wore on, when the band definitely got more groove to them and definitely did full-on stoner rock releases as opposed to big, just tremendous doom albums, uh, his voice got a little bit uh, kind of more, I don't know what the word is, accessible, melodic, maybe that's it, melodic, I don't know. Anyway, a great album, love this album to death, The Ethereal Mirror. For day three here, if you are a fan of Cathedral, let us know what you think of the Ethereal Mirror in the comments below. If you haven't listened to this album, go check it out. It's absolutely crushing. If you love Doom and you haven't listened to Cathedral, what are you waiting for? And let us know what you think. Also, list your pick for day three in the comments below and visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, all together, all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alerted of all of our content as a post. And please do hit the like button before you leave also down below you've got the links to our ko-fi page as well as our merch page uh so you can get the cool shirt like this and many others that we have so go check that out as well we got posters we got hats hoodies stickers coffee mugs all sorts of stuff also uh we got some things from our sister channel comic book users so uh, go investigate that and uh we'll see you tomorrow for day four here on albums that are 30 years old in 2023 till then I am P. Pardo. Have a good one, everybody. Stay tuned for Friday morning at the Fun House with Martin Popo. Stay tuned for Four Fusion Friday. All those are coming up this morning. Lots of fun stuff happening here on the channel. And, of course, we've got Ranking the Albums on Sunday, where I will be ranking the catalog of Hot Tuna. So that's coming up on Sunday. You are McCalkin and Jack Cassidy and company. So uh, lots happening here on the channel, so you don't want to miss anything. So, again, if you haven't subscribed, please do, and hit that notification bell. Till then, bye-bye. I'm P. Pardo. Have a good one.